Hello, and welcome to the Humumu Halloween Home Horror Hoedown. The podcast where we watch 31 horror movies throughout the hallowed month of October. Ranging from the critically acclaimed to film school projects gone gruesomely awry. And we take them all way too seriously. I'm your host, Mike Hommel. And I'm your host, Sully Hommel. Now warning, we use a ghoulish number of spoilers, so watch the movies first. Second warning, we don't know anything about anything, so don't take us seriously while we take these movies seriously. Hey guys, I'm popping in real quick at the beginning to give you a bonus spoiler warning for this episode we will be spoiling the movie april fool's day which is like from 1986 i think it's one we reviewed last year uh during this podcast so if you don't want that spoiled this might not be the one for you but you know what watch it first because it'll be fun it's a very different movie from this one but there's certain things that we ended up talking about enjoy today we're here in our illustrious bedroom studio to record a podcast about Cry underscore Wolf from 2005. Yes, this movie being, it's kind of a unique story. It's uh, about a group of high school kids. They weren't very high school. They were so college. They were pretty college agey seeming like, but they were definitely supposed yeah. to be high school. They said it was high school. But at like, you know, one of those boarding schools where yeah. rich people send their kids because they raised crappy kids and they don't want them around anymore yeah <clears throat> no offense to any listeners who might be in a boarding school <laughs> yeah that's bad news about their parents huh? <laughs> right sorry i had to be the one to tell you <laughs> but these kids do a thing they sneak off during the night to go play mafia which is like i don't know that's not that intense maybe you didn't have to sneak off to do that but they do i mean i think the idea was that it was like after lights out you know yeah they were supposed well, to be in bed. Then I had that thought. I was at the end when they finished their game and the winner collected all the money that they had all put in. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're betting. That's not okay. School yeah. does not approve. Yeah. So, yeah. So they go play Mafia for money. Only it's not Mafia, it's kind of Werewolf, but it's neither. They just call it like the Lying Game or something. Yes, it was called the Lying Game. Basically, one of them gets a lipstick mark on their chest and the rest of them have to figure out who it was. Each time someone is accused and, you know, they've made their defense or their, you know, their arguments for or against, then the whole group votes whether the accused person or the accuser has to leave. So eventually it's down to just two people and Somebody's one of them leave. is the winner. It's One of them is the person who made the choice and one of them is either the last accuser or the actual person. Yeah, or they could have caught the liar right away. It's true. It's true. They didn't, though, in the movie. No, because obviously he had to stick around because he was the new kid and he was the main character of the movie. So he had to win the first... Yeah. Lying, the first round of the lying game that he was in. So this is the latest in a, you know, classic trend of movies with punctuation between two words as their title, which are thinly veiled lessons in how to play a given party game. Yes. What is the other one you're thinking of? Other one? There's just endless. But the one I remember mm -hmm. most clearly is last year we reviewed Witch Dash Hunt, which was the same, pretty much the same game. They, they Their game was called either Witch or maybe Witch Hunt. And it was the same thing where they, you know, had to figure out who the witch was. Yes. That one had a much more elaborate explanation of how to play the game like it it was <laughs> yes. it was weirdly <laughs> focused on instructing us on how to play yeah. the game it's like we had bought a board game of witch hunt and it came with a vhs tape going here's how you play yeah which was funny because part of that was like word for word the recording that we use when we play werewolf with people when they yeah. come over for game night. Yeah. So it was based on the same game. Definitely. Very strange. This one was a little simpler. Yes. I Looking back, I see that we rated Witch Dash Hunt. The, we each gave it a three. Which, it was an interesting movie. It was uh, not real high quality, but it was fun. It was. So... This one, um, Cry underscore Wolf, which I'm going to just call Cry Wolf from now on. Oh, weird. Definitely was of a higher quality 
Yeah, and it had a bunch of fancy actors in it. It had Sam from Supernatural. It had the devil from American Gothic. It had John Bon Jovi. <laughs> it had bon Jovi. So you know it's good. Yeah. So production values wise, it was definitely a step up from Witch Hunt. What would you say in terms of storyline wise, in, in terms of movies made <laughs> from the family game night game werewolf? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I feel like it was what they did was they created a very interesting mystery because mm -hmm. they did something here that I thought was pretty fun. We just rewatched Hannah Gadsby's uh, stand up special Douglas a couple weeks ago, and in that special she begins her show by telling you all the jokes she's going to tell you, not like not telling the jokes, but telling you what they're going to be. Right, and the premise being that or oh, yeah. you know she's on the autistic spectrum and she's like presenting like here's what to expect because so, it's so more you're enjoyable not too that way right well i mean i don't know if it's about <laughs> uh, the shock well, I think but that just was the joke that was the joke but i think also there was an element of this is how i enjoy things yeah and well, she was doing it, it that way did it, it adds a whole layer because you're thinking about it and mm -hmm. she mentioned that repeatedly and in this movie we had the same thing early on they make up this idea of a serial killer that's going to attack their school and they go through each one of the members of this group of kids saying, you're going to get killed this way, then this way, then this way. And so we can reasonably assume when they say that this is what's going to happen in the movie. And so right. it's interesting to watch it waiting for those things to be set up and happen. Right. So they create this serial killer. They were pretending that a serial killer existed and had killed these types of people in this order yeah. at a previous school. And so we can assume he's going to do it here. Right, because they were basing the characters they were killing off in their fake serial killer incident on each other. And there was, like, I liked the tie-in or the connection of, you know, these, they kept talking about how they'd been going to school together for four years and they, like, knew each other super well, almost too well. And yeah. and so, you know, that whole scene where they were creating that that history for this fake serial killer, they were kind of digging at each other and, like, attacking each other's weaknesses, you know, the way siblings do. Yeah. And so that, and that kind of was part of the layer of the whole movie, too, because you never knew who was backing whom. Because there was a lot of infighting, but you never knew if they were really fighting or if it was sibling fighting or if it was complete straight up faked fighting. And all along, a murder happens at the very beginning of the movie, which is why, you know, they're saying that's the first kill of this serial killer. And now he's coming for more. So they used that as their motivation and, you know, what would make people believe this is happening. Mm -hmm. So as you're hearing them do this, you're also wondering which one of these guys is really the killer, because probably one of them is, right? I mean, right. I mean, why not? Obviously, someone in the movie was going to be the killer. Yeah, it'd be pretty dumb if we just because, just some random because guy. Because it's only movies like The Open House oh, where you have no. a random non-character show up at the end and they are the person. Zero out of five. <laughs> Yeah, so like we assumed at the beginning it had to have been one of them. And interestingly, we paused the movie we and did. each made our choices of who we thought it would be. Can you reveal now what your choices were? Or did you just pick one choice? Well, okay, so I was very sure at that point. I knew, like, the reason I said we're going to stop and write this down is because I was like, I know who this <laughs> is. I want it documented that I was yeah. right. Yeah. So I wrote down... It is Dodger. That's a good call. Then as we went forward, because that was pretty early on, mm -hmm. as we went forward, I ended up like, or maybe it's Tom, or maybe it's Owen, maybe it's Bon Jovi. Like those were all, I'm like, it could be any of those. <laughs> Who did you end up writing down? Well, you have just named my entire list, but I started with Tom. He did doing that kind of, oh, he's your roommate, you're going to trust him, but you don't thing. And then I went to Owen because he had come from another school and he was mysteriously sure. not a good kid and what's mm -hmm. going on. And then I've had Dodger. So those three in order in that part. And then way later on, probably very shortly before it was revealed, I was like, oh, Bon Jovi. And... Yeah. This is very spoilers. We we know we do spoilers here, but Bon Jovi was actually the mislead of the whole thing. Yes. 
Yes. So it was it not Bon Jovi. It worked yes, on it, you. It got me. So I think part of my issues were like the fact that I was able to guess that it was Dodger from the very beginning. That it that was entirely based on how they set up the story, right? They set yeah. it up, and I was like, "Oh, well, clearly this is what's happening." Yeah, and that was one of my like, like I was kind of constructing the whole movie with each of these characters. I'm like, "Oh, Dodger, she's inventing uh-huh. this. It makes sense, right?" And so it sort of speaks to the fact that it is not a super original story (laughs) that from the very beginning, I was like, oh, here's how this is being plotted out. Like my writer brain went into, you know, went into action and was like, oh, it's going to do this and this and this and this and this. That is exactly what I was thinking. Now, there were moments as we went along where I was like, ooh, but maybe they're going to like tweak this storyline and do something different. I also think that there were moments where I thought it, like, I think I thought it was Bon Jovi, maybe because he was a recognizable actor, you know, like, <laughs> like sort of like Law and Order. Yes. When you're watching Law and Order, and you're like, oh, I know who that guy is. He's on all the sitcoms lately. He's clearly either the bad guy or the victim who's going to be around for the whole show. Right. Yeah. But I do think that storyline wise, it there wasn't anything original in it because it was exactly the first storyline that I thought of, too. It felt original to me because, I don't know, this whole idea of we're going to tell you what it is and then you're going to see it play out, but you're going to have to figure out, you know, why that's happening. It's not as straightforward as we're just telling you. I think that was, I mean, I, I'm sure it's been done before, but I think it was clever and fun to think about. Where it let me down isn't any of that. It's in how it actually ended up at the end, basically. It was like, this is no surprise at all, but it was very impossible. All all of the pranks that were done, Mm -hmm. there were too many of them. They went way too far. They happened way too late. And it was like, this is really over the top, kind of. The way too late was a big thing for me. One of my final notes was that this movie was super draggy in the middle, that I really enjoyed the way they set up the characters and the way they set up the scenario. And I don't necessarily consider predictable a complaint in this situation because it was predictable in exactly the way I like movies to go. (laughs) So it may have been more predictable for me than for other people because this is my kind of movie. Yeah. So I really liked the setup because I was like, oh, yes, this is this is going to be good. This is going to be fun and twisty yeah. and, oh, yeah. And then it took forever for the next person to die. Yeah, that was like way later. There were there were a lot of like sightings of the killer, but then nobody was dying. Right. It was like a third. The middle third of the movie was just like this emotional drama between Owen and Dodger, Dodger, which I guess had to be built up because that was the whole point. Like how she said, you know, well, but you're a nice guy. So you're predictable. Like we had, to, it had to be established that they had this relationship where he was, he felt this way about it and she felt that way about it and whatever. Yeah. But then in the last third, once they actually started like doing the things that they said those those S- imaginary story. kills did not start until way in. No, it took way too long. And they could have been spread out more. Mm-hmm. Like, they had it all well, happen, boom, 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 like dominoes. And the reason they couldn't really spread them out was because the people that, quote, died would have had to, like, disappear for the rest of the movie, which would have been difficult. I mean, I guess, but I feel like it could have been done. Yeah. I feel like we have seen that movie. What was that? Well, are you Within speaking of, of April years. Fool's Day? Yes. I put the note that what I was thinking is, I know this is really going to turn out that one of them's a killer and is, you know, killing them all and whatever. But it would be really fun if instead it's like April Fool's Day and they're just, you know, they're, it's all a trick. And that is what happened. It's a trick that went too far, basically, except, no, she did it with the she- reason that she wanted him to kill the guy. And she had already killed well, her rival for that guy's affection. Yeah. So, I mean, she was definitely a killer. But, yeah, it was it was like that. And I feel like, uh, I don't remember what I said about April Fool's. But I sort of feel like I had complaints about the fact that they never actually had a murder. Like, Yeah. What they did have was impossible. Like, the way the people got fake killed was mm-hmm. way too 
good. <laughs> like, there's right. no way they could have pulled that off. It was like the opposite of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think I personally, like, it would have been sad for the actors because they would have gotten less screen time. But I personally would have liked to have some of them be, like, have them disappear earlier on. And you know, have those questions of, did this happen? Now, I think one of the issues that they might have run into there is they were in a boarding school and the cops were already all over the place because of this girl who had actually been murdered. So I sort of feel like they crammed it all together because once things started happening, they had to happen really fast or adults would have gotten involved and stopped it. But you know what you do for a movie like that? It's still several hours. Like they could have compressed the time of the movie down and just yeah filled the movie f- starting with those things you know like yes make it a short short period of time yeah yeah so i think their pacing was definitely off yeah and you know maybe they just felt like they had to elaborate on that relationship between owen and dodger too much because i got it early on <laughs> like i it's yeah, sort it was of pretty simple it was sort of being beat over the head beat over our heads well, it was it kind of interesting because she was mysterious. Like there was her motives and everything and what was going on with her. You like, there's something up with this girl. So that was kind of interesting. But but what it was missing was a Sherlock Holmes thing. Because we got this whole Owen is smarter than everybody thing from their lying game. So he should have been like on to her and, you know, this back and forth of will they, won't they get killed would have been fun if he had been, you know, not that he knew all along, but that he was like, wait a minute, what's this? And investigating and she outwits him this way Mm -hmm. and then he goes another way. That could have been really fun. Well, she used this idea that she established early on that he was a good guy and therefore was very predictable. So she was able to manipulate him very easily. But uh, yeah, I do think it was was disappointing how much he lost his ability to logic because he had a crush on this girl. Yeah, until the final shot. Right. You mentioned Sherlock Holmes, and I was thinking about how Sherlock Holmes and a lot of, like, mystery shows. Again, mystery (laughs) is my thing. Like, that's my jam. The pattern that I'm used to and I really like is that idea of things are happening, and then at the end, whoever's solving the problem pulls everybody together and like (laughs) explains it all, right? Like this is what happened. That's a fun scene. And when you mentioned Sherlock Holmes, it made me realize they did do that. They just did it at the beginning. Yeah. They didn't tell you the truth of what was happening, but they did tell you the series of murders. Right. No. Yeah. They didn't tell you, they didn't tell you the end twist, Yeah. but like they explained all the other stuff very clearly, yeah. <laughs> right up front. So that was kind of an interesting little turn of events. That's sort of why I give this movie some props, is that it, it was cleverly done. There was there was something there rather than just, you know, kids getting murdered in the woods like usual. Yeah. And you definitely end up going back and forth a lot on Dodger. Like, mm-hmm. she was good at manipulating, but also not great at manipulating. So she would get caught in like stupid little lies. Like she lied about being at AP chem and in with this other person. And the other person was like, I haven't taken AP chem since last year. I'm an AP bio. And so then he's like, wait, but she's lying to me. And she had to come up with another lie to explain why that lie. That was the thing that bothered me was the dialogue in this movie was so straightforward. Like, People were way too willing to say things like he's like, or maybe not willing so much as they they knew too much. And it, w- it was the movie just telling us stuff like, yeah, he would go up to somebody and say, what did you do? And he and the person would reply, knowing what he's talking about when they should have no idea. Right. They're like, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have gone to your car like that or whatever. And it's yeah. like, how did you even know what he was referring to? Yeah. There's a whole lot of that throughout the movie where everything is just too neatly explained right away when they could have had layers of lies and and just confusion. I mean, all of that adds time. I don't know how yeah. long this movie was. It didn't feel super long to me. But, um, you know, they may not have had time for that kind of nuance. Well, and, they could have put that nuance in place of the romance. That is true. <laughs> that is true. They had a whole third of a movie. <laughs> yeah. There were some very convenient 
things that happened or ways that the world worked in their universe yeah. that were just – they were almost like the the setting equivalent of what you were just saying about the dialogue. Yeah. They're in the library, right? And it's after hours. <laughs> I know what so you're saying. So <laughs> the lights in the library are on timers now. And maybe that's all the time. I don't know. Maybe it's not an after hour thing. But it's like, you know, when you go to the bathroom and the lights turn out if you don't move, right? Uh But the lights would turn out over a particular, like, row of shelves. (laughs) Yeah, like a five-foot section. If nobody moved in that area for, like, four and a half seconds. Mm -hmm. Like, they turned off so fast. I'm like, you wouldn't even, like, if you were reading a book, (laughs) the lights would go out before you would be ready to turn the page. Like, it was... It was extreme, but it was that way because they needed it to get dark in certain areas sooner than would really have happened. Yeah, they could have definitely done that differently. (laughs) Yeah, it, it it was bizarre. One of the flaws with this movie, though, is that it was a movie about teenagers that really wanted to demonstrate that these were terrible teenagers by having them all do that movie thing about teenagers where they're all friends so they speak to each other in these like really offensive homophobic sexist like fat shaming kind of way like that was all very front loaded right at the beginning and then there wasn't much through the rest of the movie but right away it was a lot and that to me feels so lazy these days Mm -hmm. and granted this was a movie from 2005 so like now, I suspect people who actually know teenagers don't write them that way anymore because I don't think teenagers really talk to each other in that same way. I don't, probably not anymore. I mean, there are some, obviously, to who be do. fair, teenagers today weren't born when this movie came out. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> some You're teenagers. Right. But, you know, I think like teenagers now, the idea of of being homophobic and sexist and fat shaming, like those are things that we talk about so often now that like that's not a cool thing. If, mm-hmm. if you are that kind of person as a teenager, you're not considered cool. You're just considered rude and gross, right? Yeah. But back then, and I hate that back then argument, but that was the way to be tough and cool and, you know, yeah, whatever. I don't like it. In movies, I think that perpetuates it, and I yeah, well, super wasn't interested in it in this movie. And I don't think anybody making movies 16 years ago had this sort of idea, but it just makes so much sense to not put that in your movie today, where even if you think it is realistic, who cares? We don't need to see it. Why? You know, you're putting it out there, adding it to the culture by putting it in your movie. You just skip it. It's not adding to your story. Right. And I think that that is an example of growth that we have seen in our society is that we can look at it now and think that is a completely extraneous, unnecessary thing. Like we don't need to include those things in order to develop our characters. We can show that people are terrible people in other ways that aren't just straight up offensive. And the fact that even if you don't really believe that and you don't, you know, you really think that's kind of, oh, snowflake thinking, <laughs> even those people are no, are, are reducing the amount of that kind of thing that they put in their movies because it doesn't market well anymore. Yeah. It doesn't sell the way it did back in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Back when underscores were used instead of spaces. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I noticed a lot of interesting dichotomies within this universe that really added to the conflict in the movie, I think. Oh, really? It sounds like you're getting very serious. I know, right? Like, that's me sounding like I know what I'm talking about. You're welcome. Okay, so there's the rich people, poor people, Mm -hmm. with Dodger being, you know, the scholarship student at this rich person's school and her friends all being rich people, right? There's the townie versus shipped here from England (laughs) because you're a rich person at a boarding school kind of thing. There was the students versus the teachers and staff, right? Yeah. There were the group of kids who had been there for four years together and knew everything about each other versus the brand new new kid kid coming in. Even within the group, there were the individuals in the group who had partnership bonds versus the individuals who just were part of the group. You know, like there was the dating couple and 
the two uh, Tom and Owen were roommates and you know like there were there were like little relationships within the group that caused these pairs to happen yeah versus some of the other people in the group who were just individuals which i thought was interesting there just were lots of points of conflict that could be used to do interesting things and Mm -hmm. i think they did do some interesting things with them yeah that reminds me of some of the um the two on the nose dialogue stuff where Tom and Owen's room gets trashed by the murderer. Yes. And Tom is angry about it because Owen's stuff isn't touched. So obviously this is set up to right. cause a conflict. Right. Tom's side of the room is <laughs> destroyed. His laptop yes. smashed everything. I mean, pretty intense. Yeah. And Owen's side of the room is pristine. <laughs> and after all that, there's like, they're over it in, 30 seconds like he's like i'm so mad at you and he's like oh look at this interesting thing on the laptop he's like oh yeah (laughs) yeah it's really too convenient all of that stuff it was yes that was that was definitely there was a lot of convenience within the storytelling and then later that room trashing came out to have been done by one of the other kids in the group as part of the prank (laughs) yeah and he's like that's terrible. You destroyed all my stuff. And he's like, yeah, I got a little carried away. <laughs> They're like, okay. And they just moved on. Yeah. I don't know. I, you're not allowed to destroy my stuff. Sorry. Yeah. No, I get you. I get you. Ratings. I enjoyed this movie. This movie ticked like all of the boxes that I have. It was... Well done in the sense that the production values weren't distracting. It wasn't an award-winning phenomenal movie sure. by any means, but but it was non-distracting, which is good. It had some actors, actresses, what have you, that I recognized, which for some reason I always kind of like <laughs> That's that. That's a key value. I mean, it is. <laughs> like, it, it sort of makes me feel like I'm grounded somehow. Like, I, I know... Some kind of parameters. <laughs> These days, oh, it's one of those things about getting old, man. I watch movies with young people in them, and I'm like, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> Who are all these young people? Like, yeah. how am I supposed to connect to this person I've never seen in my life? Like, okay, but it's not the point to connect to the actor. You're supposed to connect to the character. That is the point. But somehow, knowing, like, being able to say, like, oh, I like Tom Hanks and all these other things <laughs> makes me enjoy Tom Hanks more. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. But yeah, now all the 20 something and unders, 30 something and unders in movies, I'm like, <laughs> I've never seen this whippersnapper before. Get me a good Tom Hanks movie. Wow. Um, I need to watch While You Were Sleeping. <laughs> no. <laughs> Again. <laughs> nope. We're not reviewing that. <laughs> So I liked that aspect of it. You know, I had I was able to ground myself a little bit in this movie. And I thought the acting was good. I, I It was well done. I, I agree with your critique about the writing, but also I didn't find it that distracting. Mm-hmm. It was just a little generic. And plot-wise, it is exactly my favorite kind of, like, brain candy story. Yeah. It wasn't anything that made me think that hard, but it was – it made me think enough that I wasn't bored. And, like, it just – Mm, perfectly hit my sweet spot in terms of just a fun movie to watch. So I think I am going to give this movie a solid four chirrups out of five. <laughs> yes. Not a chirp. Not a chirp, though. A chirrup. That's a, uh, that's a subtitles joke. Yes. Closed caption joke. Okay. I, too, enjoyed this movie. I think... Partway through the movie, I kind of got distracted thinking about this idea of, I want my mind to be blown. Like, like there was enough mystery that I'm like, this could go somewhere. I'm never expecting it could be amazing and incredible and blow my mind. And it didn't do that. Mm-mm. But it did surprise me multiple times. And I think how it worked out was an interesting choice and fun. It was enjoyable. And I like. I like a mystery to solve. So while I wish I could have had my mind completely blown, I am happy with what they did to my mind. Okay. It's hard to say because there was a bunch of it that was like, they didn't do what I wanted the way they, the way I wanted. And I don't know. I I can't even say it. It's just not, it's a little too cheesy, a little too straightforward and so close to being amazing. 
Like, oh, I, like yeah. I had in my notes that, you know, like April Fool's Day, which was not amazing, but that same idea of the whole thing being a joke, but really messing up this one kid's head. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And that is what it was. So why am I complaining? I don't know. Like, well, she messed up his head so bad he killed somebody, which is cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> For various definitions of cool. Sure, sure. Um, I mean, it, it was not, it wasn't Knives Out. Yes. Right? Like that's a good like there's, reference. There's an there's an extra something and I could not even tell you right now what the difference is between those two. Well, part of it was the genericness of it. Yeah. But there is an extra something that takes knives out and turns it into a five. A, you know, like a really solid movie that you want to watch multiple times because it's so complex. This didn't have that. Yeah, it was it was a, a complicated mystery, but not really a complex story there wasn't a lot to figure out Mm -mm. even though a lot of it was secret and held for back from you for various amounts of time and we did have a kaiser soze bit at the end which is fun and uh yeah it was good so i should call it good and i should give it three and a half chirrups out of five okay not quite as high as yours but uh fair pretty cool i mean that makes sense to me because you go to a different, a slightly different kind of movie for yeah. your brainless movie watching. Whereas this movie, it was perfect <laughs> for my brainless movie watching. Yeah. This is, um, yeah, I would want more psychological. I would want it to be things aren't really what they seem, like on a real serious mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. We didn't get that, but. But it was it was pretty good. I like that it was doing something clever instead of I'm getting very tired of kids getting murdered in the woods without any further depth to it. Oh, yeah. And it took I mean, that it took what looked like it could be a very generic, just like every other screen movie and completely turned that on its head. That yeah, that I enjoy a lot for sure. Evil twins. <laughs> So what is the evil twin movie for Cry Wolf? Well, I'm sad to say that I discovered an evil twin literally called Cry Wolf from 1947, I think. Not sure. Oh, that was the one that had Errol Flynn in it, right? It's an Errol Flynn movie. I might have to go watch that. Maybe you should, because it is not a horror movie, which is why I couldn't put it in. It's a thriller, and but it didn't sound thrillery enough to qualify, so I just I couldn't do it. I could not bring myself to do that. So instead, we got the quality. We've got something that's definitely not kids getting murdered in the woods. Crying Wolf 3D from 2015. It sounds fantastic. Tell and it me is about fantastic. It. I'm I glad not, you said that. I did not watch this movie with but you. But you sat down for part of it. I feel like you, you got some experience. This movie is, you know what? It's got an interesting premise that could have been really something. It's the story of a pack of werewolves going for like a team building trip in the woods. Like they're going to, you know, go go out camping together. I like that idea. Yeah. That, you know, they have to, they have to. Make sure the bonds within the pack are are nice and strong. I yeah. like that. And the twist is the wilderness guides who take them out, like you really need guides to just go into the wood. Like a werewolf would need a wilderness <laughs> guide. Yes. Turn out to secretly be werewolf hunters <gasps> who know these guys are werewolves and are taking them out there to trap them and kill them. So mm. twist And on top of that, one of the werewolves, who recently became a werewolf, her friend tries to join the group. It's like, hey, you know, like, I just got away from my abusive husband. I need some time. Can I come with you? She's like, no, this is really not a trip for you. And she's like, but I have to, but I have to. And so she's going with them. So So there's a human. That's difficult. Yeah. Interesting. So with all of that going together, it's kind of tricky. And so stupid. (laughs) This is a horror comedy. And is so not funny. Like, at no point is it funny. It's your stupid old uncle trying to be funny the whole movie. I will say, like, I did watch, I don't know, maybe the last 15, 20 minutes of it. And I am surprised to hear that it was a horror comedy. (laughs) Well, it was very much so. Like, throughout the movie, there were all kinds of, like, like Benny Hill kind of things. Like, where people would make ridiculous faces and just react as total cartoons to what Mm. was happening. 
And like, that's supposed to be funny by itself. And if the stuff happening isn't funny, that's not funny. Yeah. And then, you know, there's goofy music going on the whole time. So it's like, it's trying to be funny and it's super not. And also the whole thing is wrapped in this framing device of there's a guy getting a book from a bookstore, which that whole scene was insane. I'm not going to go into it. We don't have time, but he gets this book. And he's reading the book throughout the movie. The book is the story of the werewolves. I noticed he was reading the book in a pub somewhere. <laughs> yes, he. it was like a 700-page tiny print book, and he read through it sitting at the, a table in the pub. Yeah. But he was the voiceover, and it was like a you know film noir narration for some reason. Very strange. It The title sequence of the movie was a James Bond title sequence, 100%. <laughs> the same kind of music, the same, you know transparent girls moving around and uh -huh, guns being pointed uh -huh. at this camera it was so weird it was also weirdly gory I yeah, mean, the whole movie was very gory with bad cgi gore yeah it um yeah werewolf movie at one point i started checking on my phone and realized i had checked out of the movie so i, I had to put it away but that was several minutes later and i lost track of what was happening in between <laughs> so sorry about that so what would you rate Crying Wolf 3D. In the end, I really want to compare it to Detention 2019 because those are our terrible evil twins that are perfect twins for each other. <laughs> and I feel like on a technical level, it was vastly superior. This was a bad movie, but it wasn't that. But can I really rate it higher? Which I feel like I want to say, because again, having watched those last 15, 20 minutes, <laughs> it was bad. that's really not saying much about the quality of the technical no. aspects of Crying Wolf. It's more saying how absolutely terrible Detention 2019 was. Oh, it was the acting for me. But this one, the thing is, I don't want to go higher, but I can't put it in the same space as Detention. So... I mean, you can. The, the space of terrible, <laughs> terrible, low, bad, one quality movies, it, that's a big space. It's There's big room space. for a lot of them. Okay. I'm going to give this one seasoned camper out of five. Okay. So you're just going to yeah. spill that soup oh, right on just one person. Yeah. I don't want it to get all over. I do want to say throughout this movie, it would go, you know, the whole thing was a story in a story. Then it would go... Another layer deep. The character in the werewolf story would start telling a story, and we'd watch that. And then it would go another layer deep, and the character in that story was telling a story. And I'm not even sure how deep it went, because I, that's when I started getting on my phone, where I'm like, okay, they're just they're just continuing yeah. <laughs> inward. But yeah, just people telling stories in stories, over and over. Feels like Inception-y. Yeah. Okay, so in this case, the evil twin, again... Definitely could not hold up to the original. No, I don't think that's going to happen. Sorry. All right. What are we watching next time? Our next movie is Dark Light from 2019. I really wanted the evil twin for this movie to be the movie Dark Light from 2004. Obvious choice. It's not a horror movie, but it's close enough that I would have counted it. But it is impossible to find. And it is garbage. You can check out the trailer on YouTube. It would have been hilarious to watch. Oh, I'm sad. very sad to miss this one. Okay, so what's the evil twin since that's not an option? In this case, we get one of those evil twins that's like an opposite twin. Okay. Is that a thing? Sure. Yeah. Sure, like a like a nemesis and I mean, I think that's the whole point of an evil twin is it's the opposite. It's, sure. you know, yeah. antithesis. This movie is the good guy. The evil version is Brightburn from 2019 as well. Okay. So Dark Light, Brightburn. I see this what you did there. Didn't quite work, but it's... A little wordplay. We're trying it. Okay. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll be back tomorrow to let you know how those two movies stack up. Yay! Movie cry underscore <laughs> cry. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how the words work. Uh -huh.